Okay, welcome back to the Tiny Ashram Studio. I'm Guru Catherine, and today, we might regret it, but we're talking about censorship. And, wow, what a big topic. But I want to approach it from a discussion that started in a group I was speaking with. And I was talking about Geode, and I was talking about the social app on Geode, with the social app, private messaging, the marketplace. We have a life and work app where you register your your work history and your education. You can even register your intellectual property to your resume in the life and work app. And all of these cool, there's a profile app, all of this nice, very basic suite of utilities that are all right there in one place in the Geode portal. And the group discussion started going in the direction of, well, as a platform, what are your rules for taking content down? Basically, what are your, what are your censorship policies? They didn't say it like that. But that was the question. What are your rules for taking content down? And it even got into the weeds of, well, what if somebody posts maybe a clip of a video and and the video is not fake it's not a deep fake or anything but the little clip of the video is is a true little clip of that video but yet misleading because of the way it was clipped well you know and it got into this whole discussion of what is misinformation what is disinformation uh, what is just falsity or fakeness? What if somebody posts something that is derogatory, defamatory, uh, inflammatory? <laughs> Pick your favorite word. And I realized then that we need to talk more about censorship and freedom. And I feel that these two concepts are very closely connected, and I want to talk about that. And so I know there's a lot of different ways we can talk about censorship. We're probably going to do a lot more discussion of this, but let's get it rolling with this. And as you have thoughts, which I know you will, <laughs> you can message me directly on my website, katherinecolleen.com, or you can find me on the Geo Discord community. You can find me on uh, LinkedIn, on X on Telegram, Rumble, you name it. Find me in all the places. And, um, and let's talk about this because this is important. It's important to talk about hard things. So what we did, and then I'll explain why. What we did in the Geode ecosystem is we made a decision. We made a conscious choice after much discussion. How are we going to do this? We made a conscious choice to build apps wherein it's technically impossible to take down your public content. So there's two types of content on Geode. Some apps are public, like the social app, Geode Social, is public. You are broadcasting to a social audience. What you post is written to the blockchain, and what you write to the chain is forever. It cannot be taken down. Uh, which also makes nice evidence of your wrongdoing. <laughs> if you ever do that, so keep that in mind. Be careful what you post uh, on social. It's forever. Versus different apps like private messaging. Well, private messaging is exactly as it says, private. Nothing gets written to the chain. And so as such, you can delete your own content, what you posted, what you wrote, what you sent to somebody. You can delete that anytime you want. But that's under your control, not somebody else's. So nowhere in the system can some third party decide that what you wrote or what you expressed or what you posted is now going to be removed. It is not possible. It is not technically possible. They could write us letters all day long. We can't do it. It's not possible to do it. 
Now, at the same time, we need to be really, really careful. And I've got to tell you, this was months of discussion <laughs> that went into this. Oh my goodness. And it still and it still goes on. Because you have all the what if scenarios. You have the what if scenarios. What if somebody tr posts something illegal, like truly heinous, heinously illegal, awful, legally wrong, morally wrong, 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 wrong. What do you do? So what we did is we made a couple of, of subsidiary choices here. So we made a choice that in order to post a photo or a video into the platforms, into the apps, you're not actually posting the video or the photo there. Why? Because blockchains have to be very judicious about their storage, about their use of storage, right? We don't have giant centralized hard drives. We're decentralized. So uh, storage is at a premium. So what you're doing there is you're really posting a link to that photo or video, which is somewhere else. So that helps. Now that being said, you could say whatever you want in text as you're messaging someone or as you're posting. Somebody could be defamatory, inflammatory, <laughs> whatever kind of famatory you want. Um, and you're not going to take it down, right? You post something in social, you could say something as nasty as you want. It cannot be taken down. And that's just what we've chosen. And it comes down to the concept of freedom. What is freedom? And, and this is a word and an idea that I have studied for years. And I'm sure I will continue to. What is freedom? There are different types of freedom. There's freedom to do, freedom of action, freedom of to do different things. And there's freedom from certain things that you want to get away from. I want to be free from things, and I want to be free to do things, say things, be things. But the very, very best definition I think I've ever heard came from Ram Dass. And he said, freedom is the realization that everyone gets to be exactly as they are, including you. And I'm not sure, I think I would adjust that definition. He said it's the realization that everyone gets to be exactly as they are, including you. Not just the realization, I think freedom is the embodiment of that realization, right? The application of that realization. I like the embodiment of. When you embody that, when you apply that in your life, what you're saying is, I'm just going to let everyone else be as they are. I'm not going to try to tell everyone else how to live their life or what to do or what to not do. I'm going to live my life. It, it's the essence of stage six when we talk about the stages. And I, and I promise to do more of that in the future. Stage six is live and let live, which is right after stage five, which is you're all mired down in your ideology, right? Telling everybody else how to live based on your ideology. Never mind theirs. <laughs> When you click over into stage six, live and let live, you're, you're saying, I'm going to do my thing, you do your thing, and we'll all just be happy. And, and this is starting, starts to get at what Ram Dass is saying about everyone just gets to be who they are. When you can really let be, when you can really just let yourself be who you are, well, that's a whole other video right there, I think. It's a whole other lesson. When you allow yourself to be who you are, and you can allow others to be who they are, 
and you just stop worrying about trying to get other people to live their lives the way you think you should live your life. Just leave everybody alone. Stay out of it. Worry about yourself. <laughs> it's always easier to look in the mirror, right? It's a, or it's a harder to look in the mirror. It's easier to blame everybody else. It's easy to look around and want to judge everyone else than it is to look in the mirror and judge yourself. Mm, that's the hard work, isn't it? And that's hugely relevant to the decisions we've made about freedom and censorship at Geode. And I think freedom is important. That's my opinion. Um, I think it's important to let people be and do what they will because they're going to be and do it anyway. The only difference is whether or not you're stressed out about it. And that brings us to this idea of a different way of approaching what normally would be cancel culture or censorship. So here's how it normally goes down. And then I want to I want to show you a different way. So one way, right? Same. Let's take the same situation. Let's take a situation where somebody is just being a complete jerk, right? Just horrid. Just being a complete jerk and a horrid person. Maybe not to the point of illegality. We do have an app where people can report illegal activity. But let's suppose somebody's not being illegal. It's not illegal to be an asshole. So great. I'm going to mark this video as explicit. <laughs> it is not illegal to be an asshole. It's, it's just rude, right? So let's suppose somebody's being a real jerk and... They're not being illegal or possibly, possibly being defamatory, possibly, maybe dancing on the edge of it. But they're just being the way that you know some people can be online. Hmm. Maybe you don't like what they said. Maybe you vehemently disagree with what they said. Maybe you are so in disagreement with what they said that you even feel that what they said might have been immoral hmm. or somehow wrong at this point you have a choice and the way we tend to operate today is we will lash out online right and you'll see this in our culture we lash out at people you will get all these people saying they're a horrible person. They ought to be demonetized. They ought to be deplatformed. And everybody just lashes out at them. Now, if you actually think they're a horrible person, why are you giving them that much attention? Where your attention goes, energy flows, as they say. So in the lashing out, that person that you claim is a horrible person just gets 10 times more attention than they would have. Right? So now that message that you thought was so immoral and awful is now getting 10 times as much in attention as it would have if you, what if you took option B? And here's a different option, right? And I don't know why nobody exercises this yet. What if you just ignored them? What if you refused to put any attention on them? What if that pops up into your awareness, this, this rude, inflammatory, whatever post, and you just go, ah, not going to pay attention to that, whatever, and you block it out, right? Um, you can physically block them from your own feed or you can just ignore them or whatever, but you give it no attention. You give it no likes. You give it no, um, you know, no rep don't reply to it. Don't repost it. <laughs> People do this. They'll take something they think is awful and they will repost it just to express how awful it is. Well, you just propagated that awful thing out into the world. Why'd you do that? So an alternate approach is to ignore it. Give it no attention. 
don't reply to it, don't click like on it, don't click angry face on it, don't say anything, don't share it, ignore it. And what happens to content online in this current culture when it's ignored? It just goes away. And so the concept of allowing the good to bubble to the top through attention, which is likes, replies, reposts, whatever, telling each other about it, the good stuff. And I know, I know, the research shows that we are 10 times more likely to talk about what we didn't like. <laughs> and therein is the essence of why people are so ugly online, because it makes you talk. <laughs> it gives them attention. But what if it didn't? So I know this is, this is a very wide-ranging video on this topic, but I believe that these two concepts, freedom as defined as letting be, and censorship as the antithesis of that, and this alternate option of what if instead of lashing out and canceling and therefore giving more attention to a thing you say you don't like, what if the approach instead of censorship was simply to ignore? This is going to get some comments. Um, I don't know if I look forward to that or not. I don't care. Uh, but this is what I think. Let me know what you think. Uh, message me at my, wi my website, katherinecolleen.com. Find me on all the places. Um, express yourself. If you think what I've said is awful, ignore it. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me this time. I'm sure we'll get into these concepts more deeply later. Let me know what questions you have and we'll see you next time.